Good afternoon. Welcome to Church of the Ascension on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. My name is Sam West, and my fellow minister of the Word is Dick DeLuca. On behalf of the Church of the Ascension, we welcome all our guests and visitors. We gather as family to live out our mission, proclaim the Word, celebrate the Eucharist, and serve the loyal community. Our vision is to be a thriving, spirit-filled faith community, transforming lives for Christ. Our role as ministry disciples is to share the love of Christ with whomever we meet. We are blessed to have you here with us today. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Daniel, assistant by Deacon Jim. The Mass intention for this liturgy is Arlene Chrysler. A few announcements. Do you please take a moment to silence your cell phones? Please see the song sheet bulletin website and Friday email for full Christmas Mass schedules. There will be a second collection for Catholic Charities at all Christmas Eve and Christmas Day Masses. Bishop Nustow has des designated next weekend, December the 30th and 31st, for second collection for Catholic Near East Welfare Association to support immediate emergency needs in Jerusalem and Gaza. 100% of fines collected will go to support this organization. And there are so many we'd like to thank for a multitude of things today, for your generous outpouring of kindness to our Christmas holiday food ministry and giving tree. Last Sunday, we assembled over 130 food baskets and distribute over 300 gifts. For our liturgy and safety ministries who supported the Zimbagaba Mass for our Ascension construction crew who set up for the reception and accessioning Philom community who provided food and served during the reception. We welcomed over 400 people from multiple parishes in our area. For the many, many people who worked tirelessly to make it possible to have multiple masses during Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, especially when Christmas Eve is the fourth Sunday of Advent like this year. Your generosity is appreciated by those we serve. All church offices and food pantry are closed this week and will reopen January the 2nd, 2024. On this fourth weekend of Advent, we remember the gift of peace we have in Christ. 
As we light this candle, it reminds us of the peace that Christ brought to the world that we celebrate very shortly. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, brings light and love through God's perfect love. Jesus is God in human form. St. John tells us, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Would you please rise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. In a very special way, I would like to welcome again Brennan and Peter in our community. Friends, this fourth Sunday of Advent reminds us that we are all called for a mission. And today we hear our mother Mary and Elizabeth. They said yes for their mission. And they did it. And they were faithful. This reminds us also to be faithful to our mission. God is calling us each day, and each one of us is unique. As we are preparing to celebrate Christmas, let us welcome Emmanuel into our lives, but also into our families. Coming together as God's family, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. <clears throat> when King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest for his, from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have to do, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture, from the care of the flock, to, the, to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, 
and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for you and my people, Israel. I will plant them as they may, <clears throat> they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people, Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when, you, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heirs after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the holy, only wise God through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Oh, 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 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing is impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Next to Christ's death and resurrection, the Annunciation is the most important event that has ever happened in the history of the whole world. Because of her choice, the human race has the hope of heaven. What if she said no to Gabriel? Because of the culture at the time, Mary might have thought, virgin birth? Are you crazy? Who's going to believe that? I'll be stoned to death as soon as the neighbors find out that I'm pregnant. Dear God, what are you asking of me? But she didn't think that. She did not say no. She said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Thus, the incarnation happened. The word became flesh. God became a human being and that dwelt among us. Of this event, Augustine has made a couple of observations. The first one was that Mary conceived Christ through her ear. He is clearly commenting on the spiritual rather than the physical dynamic and the importance of the word of God. Hearing the transcendent word through her ear initiates the process of conception. To this, Augustine adds that Mary must have conceived in her heart before she conceived in her womb. She heard the transcendent word of God, she struggled to understand it, and then she united her will to it. There is a message here, one that involves the word of God and the heart of the one who hears the word. Jesus' earthly existence begins with Mary's yes. In today's account of the Annunciation, although we normally regard the birth of Jesus as the beginning of God's presence among us, the church teaches us that the conception of Jesus in Mary's womb by the power of the Holy Spirit took place the moment that Mary agreed to be the mother of Jesus. If Mary had said no instead of yes, history might have been different. Although we know that God's plans would not have been frustrated but Mary's yes changed the world. Her obedience to God's call changed the lives for all of us. How many times 
have we said no to God? How many things would be different for us and for others if we simply said yes to him more often? A teenage girl betrothed but not yet married to Joseph, she was being asked to become pregnant by a heavenly source. In those days, Jewish betrothal was regarded as a full commitment. Mary's choice was not an easy one. Her yes effectively amounted to betraying her future spouse and to lose her virginity was tantamount to adultery, a sin punishable by death. There are two points that are made here. The first, and this is, these are for us, we need to say a courageous and generous yes to God and as Mary did. True obedience comes from free choice made in the light of what is true and good. It often requires a great deal of courage because it can involve going against the tide of social expectations. True obedience also aims at putting oneself at the service of something or someone that is greater than oneself by accepting what God clearly wants us to do or what he wants to do through us. Jesus' own moment of greatness, like his mother's, came when he said yes to his father in Gethsemane. And Jesus' own obedience is our model. Will we surrender to God and allow God to do what, <clears throat> to do what from our human point of view seems impossible? Will we surrender our agenda, our will, and our kingdom to God and allow God's agenda, God's will, and God's kingdom to become a, real, a reality for and through us? It is by saying with Jesus and Mary a wholehearted and totally unconditional yes to God that Jesus will be reborn in me or may be even born in me for the first time. By saying yes, Jesus will be born or reborn to others too. We need to try to learn God's plan for our lives. That's the other point. The good news in today's gospel from scripture is not only that God is making a provision for the salvation of his people, but also that he has a plan for each individual person. Just as God called Mary, he calls each and every one of us to the awareness of his nurturing presence, his unconditional love, and his guiding commandments. In many cases, our work for God seems to be rather ordinary, but each ordinary task which we carry out fits into God's plan in ways that we cannot imagine. God desires not just the skill of our hands and our talents alone, but the love of our hearts. The babe in the manger reminds us of what God has done and is still doing for us. What are we doing in return? Let us show our gratitude to God by living as true followers of Christ. Behold, here I am, Lord, your humble and grateful servant. Let it be done to me according to your word. St. Francis said, we are the mother of Christ when we carry him in our heart and we give birth to him through our holy works which sought to shine on others by our example. To summarize, Mary heard the calling of God's will in her life and she answered, yes, Lord. She humbly went about obeying God's will and she willingly did so because the love of God that was in her heart was so great. Amen. Amen. Please rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God.
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of glory and of Jesus, but in the Lord, truth and life, who God from to God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord in the gift of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord's come. Let us pray. O oh God of love, as you looked with favor on your servant Mary, look with favor on the prayers we now bring to you. For the church, that through her daily endeavors to make known the kingdom of God, may she become a beacon of hope to the entire world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those families awaiting the birth of a child and their health care providers, who assist them in giving this birth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of this parish, that like Mary, uh, we say yes to the Lord and proclaim the good news by word and example, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally this season, that they may find hope and believe in fellowship to the community, especially uh, Ernie Fudella, Joe Hoppel, Vilma Barrett. We pray to the Lord. Lord These names that are, are of the chronically ill listed in the bulletin, the names written in the book of prayers in the commons, and those names we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear For those who have died, that they may see God's face, especially for the names of the written in the book of the prayers in the commons, and for those deceased weekend mass intentions, our lone Chrysler. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. In joyful expectation of Christmas, we place these petitions before our merciful God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Hail Mary. Just wisdom. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord is such a sacrifice May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as they filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is fully right, right and just to our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophet foretold him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. <laughs> Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy there for these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit from the, the downfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the choice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we need this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that we have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Barry our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, a lonely Christian, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil, evil, gracious, grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said it, you are apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. Peace, peace Father. Peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sup of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. she heard the voice of God calling her to be the instrument he needed to bring our world the king of kings she could not understand the wisdom of God's plan but she answered let it be let it be done unto me. When he heard the voice of God calling him to stand and take a virgin as his wife, a child to be a man he could not understand the wisdom of God's plan but still he answered let it be let it be done unto me and we say Let it be done 
when we hear the voice of God calling out our names Lord we pray you give us faith to answer you in anything and we may not understand the wisdom of your plan but still we answer we're all healthy.
let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation grows ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's our tradition here, if you are a guest or visitor, to welcome you. And in order to do that, if you would please stand, tell us your name and where you are from. We would like to welcome you. Do we have any brave souls? No? <laughs> Yay. Yes, sir, your name? Steve Rockwell. Steve, and you're from? Uh -huh. And you're visiting from? Right. OK. And where you're visiting? from Daytona Beach, Florida. I know, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, then please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.